what we'll be doing today as the title of the stream says is creating an NBA season scheduler. This is something that has been on my mind. This is an article I wrote. It's been on my mind since 2019. I'm a big fan of basketball, big fan of software development. That is my career. And uh, yeah, I every opportunity, every chance I can get, I combine those two passions. So when you think about any sports league, if you're a sports fan or watch games, you know that there's a number of teams in a league and a league is going to have um, a number of players. So you got like, let's uh, talk about it in the, in the preference of the NBA. The NBA is a league composed of 30 teams and each one of those teams plays 82 games. Um, this is what the NBA or any sports league does at the start of a season. They have to figure out who plays who, when, where, and how many times to play. And it's surprisingly a pretty complicated issue, especially when you think of realistic circumstances like travel. You don't want a team to have to unnecessarily travel all across the country. So you want to, you know, optimize for having games. Appreciate it. Every team has to play each other once. Every team has to play an equal number of home games and away games. And no team should play twice in a day, of course. Um, so these are just some of the constraints. But, like, in the NBA specifically, you know, um, there's more. Each team should play 41. If they're playing 82 games, half of their games are home games in their home state and city. And um, the other half are away games. So it's like really hard to balance it when you think about all that and to make a schedule that's fair for all the teams in terms of, of course, um, dealing with days off, how many days of rest do you have between games, how many times will you have games that are back to back, like on Monday and Tuesday, um, games in an NBA season, assuming it's like a full length season. So with that in mind, we know that we're going to have 1,230 total games. And uh, without further ado, let's just get started with the code and what that's going to look like. So I already made some boilerplate code here. Um, and we're going to start with the scheduler. So if theoretically we want to make a scheduler for a football team, actually, let's not call this NBA scheduler. Let's call it a scheduler in general. And we'll see if we can test this out in late a bit later on if we can make a scheduler for a football uh, league, for soccer, and for baseball. Because they all have different numbers of teams and different games in their season. I am just taking the very lazy route of um, creating a list, creating a list of all the teams so that we can, uh, we can do our thing. And we can generate this. This this will be the most monotonous thing in this whole stream here. This should be fine. So we got all our NBA teams here. So we'll be able to use that. Um, we won't need to put it in the scheduler. This will just be a variable like on the side. J in range. And range takes a stop. It's a method that takes um, can take a different number of parameters. So how I use it here is passing in one parameter, which is going to be the uh, upper limit. So it's going to be the stop variable. So we're going to go by default. It goes from zero to whatever you give it. If you give it one parameter and the thing is like every team is going to play each other at least once. So it's going to be at least, um, let me print, uh, my assumption is correct. There should be 870. T um, this matchup list should be um, a length of 870. So let's print that. O of course, like with an extension of this, we're going to have there are seasons where games people uh, teams play each other multiple times. So the Mavericks and the Pelicans, they're going to be playing more than once this season. So that's fine, but in this um, 
in our first initial version. We're not going to uh, do that in day is going to be. So what we're going to do, I should explain this. What we're going to do for this method is we're going to retrieve the games that are scheduled already for that day. And we're going to pull that from this structure here, season game days. And if there are no games there, or if the number of games that day does not exceed, um, or I guess if the number of games isn't five, like it's, it's, um, it's four or less than four, then we're going to find that that's an eligible day for a game to be scheduled. So we're going to schedule that game on that day. So that's how we're going to do this. You know, let me, um, I'm thinking of like the most optimal way to write this, but I want this to be, you know, like a learning experience for anyone that watches this. So I am going to be descriptive here. So if day is not in season game days, what we're going to do here is fill in that day. So the way we'll do that is we'll do self dot season game days and use the key here. And this will initialize an entry in season game days. See so what the thing is here, we're going to want to, this is a dictionary that's mapping integers, numbers to list. Okay. We wrote a lot there, but I believe that is all. I'm be surprised if this compiles, but we're going to test this out now. So scheduler dot assign games in season. And then we're going to scheduler dot print games in season and let's let it rock. Okay. We actually got output. I'm happy that that happened so soon. It does not take that. Okay. Uh, there's a lot, a lot to go through. There's a lot of days. Okay. I was about to be lazy. Okay. There's a lot of days with one game. Let's see if there's any ga days that have multiple games. Game zero. Why are there no days with multiple games? How's that possible? For I, oh, I'm using I twice. Maybe that. Yeah, this should be J. I thought I used J, but I did not. Oh wait, uh, this will be game J plus one. Let's see. I think I overwrote the I variable. No, that wasn't it for I in range. So we're only okay. Something up with our is day available game because something's oh, I know. So run this multiple times for the answer appears to me. Yeah, that's what I do like with a lot whenever I'm working in, in at work too. Okay, I see the issue here. Um, if the day isn't isn't available, we're um, we're just skipping that day. We're just skipping that day. Day available. We're gonna keep generating. Find a day that is. But the thing is, actually, no, that this wasn't the issue. Because all these games have one all these days have one game in them. This isn't the issue. So we don't need to do this for now. I see an I, so it was just scheduling a game. We had 500 to choose from. So it's actually just scheduling. A, oh, scheduling a game on each day. It was just going from zero and then it's good. Yeah. Yeah. That was a small, but a very costly error. I just don't want to have to. So this is the reason why there's a key error here is because there are some days that don't have games, which is why when I ran the code, it was a different key error that was happening. So nice. This looks wait, let me have add some print lines. Okay, let's start from day one. This is beautiful. This is lovely. Oh, the output doesn't go that far back. Okay, that's fine. So day 104, we had three games. Day 105, we had one game. 106, two games, 107, two games, 108, four games. Okay, trying to see. Okay, there's a five gamer here. Five gamer here. Nice. 
All right, that's pretty much it for me. I got tired fast, but this was exciting. I'm glad. This is this is my stuff. Simulation, permutation type, um, small like projects, where you're like working with different constraints. Like I love this. This is like one of my 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 biggest secret passions. But yeah, I'm tuning out now. Thanks for tuning into the stream, and uh, have a good night. Peace.